The human immune system. This is a defense mechanism that protects your body from pathogens and has kept you alive to watch this very explanation of it. Pathogens are foreign bodies that have the ability to cause disease. Some include bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoans and prions. Bacteria are unicellular prokaryotic organisms which reproduce through binary fission and mutate very quickly. For example, Vibrio cholerae. Fungi is a eukaryotic organism which can be unicellular or multicellular and reproduces through sexual or asexual methods including fragmentation, budding and spores. For example, ringworm which attacks the skin or scalp. Viruses are non-cellular organisms which are highly infectious and dangerous as they require living host cells to replicate. For example, COVID-19. Protozoans make up a diverse group of unicellular eukaryotic organisms. For example, malaria which is caused by Plasmodium falciparum. Prions are non-cellular misfolded proteins which are highly infectious due to being mutated. For example, creutzfeldt jakob disease. The immune response is split into two, the innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity is non-specific as it does not differentiate between pathogens and is present from birth. This includes the first and second line of defense. Whereas acquired immunity is specific as it is gained after a primary exposure and is not present from birth and includes the third line of defense. In order to explain both of these responses, let's take a look at an example of an infectious disease which made history with four pandemics over the last 200 years. Cholera, aka the Blue Death, was called that because patients became blue after severe dehydration. So, cholera is a bacterial infectious disease which is caused by the bacteria Vibrio cholerae. This bacterium is able to reproduce through the asexual methods of binary fission. This involves 1. DNA replicates 2. Bacterium cell elongates 3. Organelles move to opposite sides 4. Cell wall pinches in the middle forming a cleavage 5. Cytokinesis which splits the cell producing two genetically identical daughter cells. This causes symptoms of severe diarrhea with a fishy odour and vomiting, which leads to death from dehydration. Transmission. This bacterium is found in feces and is transmitted indirectly through contaminated water in sewages and other bodies of water. Innate immunity. Firstly, the first line of defense will attempt to block and prevent the pathogen from entering the body using physical and chemical barriers. Physical barriers include the skin, which protects the vital organs and internal systems from making direct contact with the pathogen. Skin is also well supplied with blood for early access to white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets for a quick response of the second line of defense. Chemical barriers also attempt to kill the pathogen through chemicals such as those found in mucous membranes which cover open body tissue and trap pathogens with a viscous and slimy mucus, preventing the pathogen from entering. Now to relate this back to cholera, gastric juices in the stomach, including various acids such as hydrochloric acid, will attempt to kill the cholera bacterium. However, they will fail. This is because lower levels of acidity will not be enough to kill the bacterium due to its strong protective capsule. This will allow the bacterium to pass through the first line of defense. Once this happens, the second line of defense is activated. This is also part of the innate response and is non-specific, meaning it targets anything foreign and is present from birth, just like the first line of defense. The second line of defense includes FIP, F for fever, I for inflammation, and P for phagocytosis. Inflammation is the dilation of blood vessels to bring in more blood to the infected area. This begins when an injured cell releases chemokines that alert other white blood cells including basophils and mast cells. These two cells have an essential role in inflammation, which is to release histamine and prostaglandin. Histamine is a chemical which rushes blood to the infected area and prostaglandin increases the amount of blood by dilating vessels and increasing permeability. 
As a result, more blood cells move to the infected area causing two things to happen. One, increased concentration of phagocytes which kill the pathogen through phagocytosis. Two, increase in temperature due to more heat from blood vessels undergoing cellular respiration, which is a heat releasing reaction. This makes the environment inhospitable for the pathogen, hence killing it. For this same reason, the second line of defense is also responsible for fevers. Fevers are caused by pyrogens, which are fever-causing chemicals, which act on the hypothalamus to increase the normal internal blood temperature above 37 degrees. As a result, the living conditions become inhospitable for the pathogen, which operates at the same optimal temperature as a human, thus killing the pathogen. Also, the activity of white blood cells is enhanced with higher temperature, promoting phagocytosis. Phagocytosis involves phagocytes engulfing and destroying any foreign body that it detects. Phagocytes are white blood cells which include macrophages and neutrophils. These both can complete phagocytosis. However, the neutrophil dies immediately after engulfing and forms pus, while the macrophage can continue to kill up to 100 pathogens and is also involved in the third line of defense since it is antigen presenting. When a phagocyte detects a foreign body, it will consume or engulf the pathogen and break it down using enzymes in the lysosome organelle. Think about a Pac-Man eating ghosts. During this process, macrophages will break off and attach a fragment of the antigen on a surface protein of this macrophage called Major Histocompatibility Complex, MHC2. This is used in the third line of defense of the antibody-mediated response. This response involves the production of antibodies to kill pathogens. By displaying the fragment of the antigen, the helper T cell is alerted. This brings us to the third line of defense, acquired immunity. The third line of defense involves two types of white blood cells, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The B cell can differentiate into two, plasma B cells and memory B cells, whereas the T cell can differentiate into four, the helper T cell, cytotoxic T cell, memory T cell and suppressor T cell. Both B and T cells are produced in the bone marrow and are white blood cells. However, the B cells mature in the bone marrow while T cells mature in the thymus gland. Also, B cells are only involved in the antibody mediated response while T cells can also be part of the cell mediated response. Within the antibody mediated response, a macrophage will engulf the pathogen and present the antigen on its surface protein. Then, the helper T cell will attach its receptor to the antigen presented by this macrophage. It will then release into leukin 2, which is a type of cytokine which activates the naive B cell to differentiate and clone into plasma B cells and memory B cells. Both these cells are important for developing immunity against the pathogen. The plasma B cell is responsible for producing antibodies which work in four different ways to promote phagocytosis, while the memory B cell will remember the same pathogen for a faster response during the secondary exposure. This is because a low concentration of memory B cells will remain in the blood for a very long time. It is important to note that antibodies do not destroy the pathogen, but only help the macrophage to engulf the pathogen more easily. Antibodies can do this in four different ways, including 1. Neutralization Normally, pathogens can bind to a healthy body cell and kill it. With antibodies, they stick to the pathogen to form an antigen-antibody complex, which prevents it from binding to the host cell, hence allowing the cell to survive. 2. Agglutination Antibodies clump the pathogen into a solid mass where pathogens become trapped in a network of antibodies which is then engulfed by phagocytes. This makes it quicker to kill the pathogen. 
3. Opsonization Antibodies tag pathogens for destruction, which makes it easier for phagocytes to locate them. 4. Complement activation This is the same as opsonization, but the pathogen is destroyed by complement proteins rather than phagocytes. To summarize the roles of B and T cells in the third line of defense, plasma B cells produce antibodies. Memory B cells remember the same pathogen for a faster secondary response when small amounts of these remain in the blood. Helper T cells release interleukin-2, which promotes naive B cells and T cells to differentiate into these circled cells. Prevention. Cholera can be treated in various ways. Some include washing hands with clean, purified water before eating, drinking water that has been purified and filtered, and vaccinating against cholera. Vaccines are weakened or dead forms of the pathogen, which are introduced to the immune system in order to trigger the third line of defense, to develop antibodies and memory cells for a faster response during the secondary exposure. The use of vaccines develops an artificially induced immunity and is beneficial as the individual does not experience any symptoms of the disease. However, the downside is that new vaccines must be produced and taken if the pathogen can mutate quickly and produce new strains such as the flu caused by a virus. Since this virus mutates regularly, a new flu shot must be taken every year. This graph shows three types of immunity. In purple is the passive immunity, in green is the naturally induced active immunity, and in red is the artificially induced active immunity through a vaccine. To begin, the passive immunity shows an initially high concentration of antibodies. This is because antibodies are immediately given as an injection after contracting a dangerous disease, such as hepatitis A. Such a dangerous infectious disease must be immediately killed with the help of these antibodies, rather than relying on the body to produce its own antibodies, which is too time consuming in this time sensitive situation. Active immunity can be acquired by exposure to the pathogen from the environment or a vaccine. This will begin with no antibodies, until the primary exposure where plasma B cells and memory B cells are produced via the antibody mediated response, which we spoke about earlier. This will increase the antibody concentration. During the primary exposure, the concentration of antibodies is very low and the response is very slow. After the primary exposure, small concentrations of memory B cells will remain in the blood which is the reason why the initial antibody concentration is greater at the secondary exposure than the primary exposure. Because of these memory B cells, the secondary response will be much faster and produce a higher concentration of antibodies as memory B cells can quickly differentiate to produce antibodies. This active immunity is longer lasting than the passive immunity, which is short term. Apart from vaccinations, other methods of preventing the spread of disease include quarantine, which minimizes the contact between healthy individuals and infected individuals, especially in contagious diseases. This was implemented in many countries during the COVID-19 pandemic. Control. Methods of controlling the spread of infectious disease vary depending on if it is a local, regional or global spread. Local spread, neighborhood, village, town, city level. Methods include social distancing, self-isolation if experiencing any symptoms, washing hands and practicing personal hygiene. Next is a regional spread. This involves spread within the five regions, Africa, the Americas, Asia, Europe and Oceania. Methods include closing state borders, implementing travel bans and enforcing personal protection, such as having to wear masks and using hand sanitizer, which was implemented during COVID-19. A global spread will require methods such as limiting travel between countries with a high number of cases and isolation in hotels for two weeks after traveling. 
During the cholera epidemic in London in 1854, a physician, John Snow, identified the source of infection by mapping the incidence of cholera and the locations of local water pumps. This enabled environmental management methods to be used by controlling the water supply by closing the water pumps, boiling water before drinking and chlorinating water. Sanitation methods include disposing of waste safely by developing modern sewage and water treatment systems that killed and removed the bacterium from water. Also, better hygiene practices were enforced, such as washing hands before eating and washing food with purified water before consuming. Treatment. Back during the cholera epidemics, in order to treat cholera, doctors used rehydration therapy to restore fluids and electrolytes to prevent severe dehydration. In the 1820s, Patients with cholera were actually given an aromatic drink, such as spearmint or chamomile tea. Unfortunately, antibiotics were not used at the time. And the first vaccine for cholera was made in 1885, which was much after the epidemics. Today, cholera is treated through rehydration therapy and antibiotics, such as tetracycline, to kill the bacteria. Antibiotics are pharmaceutical drugs which inhibit various mechanisms of bacteria including cell wall synthesis, protein synthesis, nucleic acid synthesis and enzyme reactions. The inhibition of cell wall synthesis involves antibiotics interfering with the ability to develop the essential cell wall polymer peptidoglycan. This is beneficial as it is fast and it is not toxic to human cells since we do not have a cell wall. Although antibiotics can kill or inhibit bacteria, there are some major disadvantages. These include 1. Developing antibiotic drug resistance, which is extremely dangerous. And 2. They are not specific. So, immunity for secondary exposure to this bacteria cannot be developed. The inhibition of protein synthesis can happen in various ways, such as disrupting the enzyme which forms peptide bonds between the amino acids, hence breaking the peptide chain. This will lead to a non-functional protein, inhibiting bacterial processes. However, again, this can lead to antibiotic drug resistance, and this method does not kill the bacteria, it only inhibits it. And that's most of Module 7 of the HSC Biology course summarised. I hope this was helpful and easy to understand. Thank you so much for watching and study hard.